Yesterday, golf superstar Tiger Woods was in a horrendous single car accident, transported to hospital, and had some surgeries for pretty serious injuries. Will that affect his ability to play? Let's review his injuries in more detail and discuss what outcomes we can expect. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sonam, and I'm a resident doctor specializing in sports and exercise medicine. On this channel, I break down injuries athletes have so that average fans can better understand what's going on. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to stay up to date. For now, let's get back to reviewing Tiger Woods' injury. So I want to start off by showing you, actually, the, the wreckage footage here. And you can see, it, it appeared that he actually had a rollover collision. And while they didn't need to use Jaws of Life to get him out, the reports actually stated that they needed to use kind of a, a, an axe and a few other tools to really, unfortunately, get him out of this car. Now, when you look at something like this, I mean, immediately you're thinking this is an extremely dangerous accident. And to be honest, many reports say that he's lucky to be alive. And honestly, I echo that as well. Had he not been wearing that seatbelt or have that airbag that deployed into his face, this could be a life-ending crash. And, and thankfully, it isn't the case. So I have here, actually, the official Twitter news release that was released on Tiger Woods' Twitter feed. And it actually outlines all of the different injuries that he had. Let's go through them one by one and discuss what impact they will have in his future playing career. So the first thing that you'll see here is a comminuted open fracture of both upper and lower portions of the tibia and the fibula bones. And they talk about stabilized by inserting a rod into the tibia. So what is a comminuted fracture? And if we look here, this diagram summarizes a variety of different fractures, but what I want you to focus on is this one here, a, a comminuted open fracture. So there's two things in this word. Comminuted means multiple pieces, and open fracture means that the bone is sticking out of the skin. So if you see here, this bone is actually sticking out of the skin, and when we talk about a comminuted fracture, we're talking about multiple pieces. Now, comminuted fractures are extremely difficult to, to surgically correct. If you think about it, if you had a bone that just broke in one spot, yeah, you put it together and you hammer some nails in it, much like construction and putting a bunch of two by fours together. But if you have shattering of a glass, it is much harder, for example, to put all those pieces back together. So this is gonna pose to be quite a, a, a difficult surgical operation that Tiger Woods will need to undergo. Now, the fact that he had an open fracture, that's another point of concern. Closed fractures are fractures that stay within the skin and do not come out of the skin itself. An open fracture breaks the skin. When there's a breakage of the skin, these are very, very prone to infection. So in many cases, you actually have to wash this out with multiple washes of antibiotics locally to that area, put them on either IV or oral antibiotics, and make sure that you keep this wound nice and clean. So in terms of how they fixed it, this isn't Tiger Woods' leg, but it is a tibia, which is your shin bone, and your fibula, which is the, the bone on the outside, the smaller guy. And essentially they describe how they fix these. So you'll see there's a huge plate and two screws that will stabilize this type of fracture, much like what Tiger Woods may have received. Now, if you noticed here, they actually don't fix the, the fibula because the fibula is not a weight-bearing bone. So you actually don't need to fix it. And it will, these pieces will find it, each other and essentially heal over time. All right, so the next injury that he had was they talk about the bones of the foot and ankle that were stabilized with a combination of screws and pins. So when you're seeing that, you're thinking, okay, the ankle must have suffered from multiple fractures. The ankle is a tough joint and having injuries to the ankle make recovery just that much more difficult. So here we're looking at the right ankle. And the reason why the ankle is so complex and fractures to this area are so difficult is because of the number of bones that we have in this area. So you'll see you have your two bones up here, but then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven plus bones in this very small area that all create the ankle and foot complex. Now, your main ankle joint is this one here, your tibio -talar complex. We also call it the mortise, for example. This is the one that makes your foot go up and down. You do a few other ankle joints, particularly something called the sub joint, which is this one here. And that actually helps tilt your foot, invert and evert your foot in and out. Now, they don't talk about exactly what happened to this area, but unfortunately, when you have fractures to this area, you have quite a lot of stiffness in your ankle joint later on. And particularly, I find in most patients, while they may not have enough issues flexing their foot down or pointing their foot down like a ballerina, they have issues really dorsiflexing or bringing their foot up. So they feel like their ankle constantly impinges when they try to move the foot upwards like this. And the last, but arguably the most important thing that they talk about here is 
Trauma to the muscle and soft tissue of the leg required surgical release of the covering of the muscles to relieve pressure due to swelling. So this is actually a surgical emergency and one we are really worried about. This essentially is compartment syndrome. So what is compartment syndrome? Essentially the body has a, a fascial covering over different muscle groups and you'll see it pretty much all over the body. This you'll see is the covering to the lower leg. This muscle covering is not flexible, so it does not stretch. And essentially it's a nice little firm covering over the muscle. The muscle though is very pliable. It will get bigger when you work it out. It will get smaller when you don't work it out. It'll get bigger when, when it's swelling, for example, or bleeding, but, and it'll get smaller in the reverse. So in an acute trauma, when you have a lot of bleeding to the area because of the multiple fractures he sustained kind of in, in this area plus the ankle, it causes excessive bleeding. And because of that, this space starts to fill up. And the problem is this fascia does not give. So if there's no ability to stretch the, the tissues further with that covering, what happens is you theoretically will infinitely increase the pressure inside the leg. And that actually causes compression of nerves, vessels, and permanent tissue damage. And pretty much in this case, we tell people time is tissue. And the way that we treat these, in many cases, if it's, if it's pretty severe, we do this in the eMERGE, you essentially will cut pieces of the fascia down the line, and we call them fasciotomies to help release the actual tissue. And patients will actually note an immediate improvement in a lot of their symptoms. The biggest signs that we look for here are pain out of proportion of what we expect. The leg is white, it is pulselessness. There's pretty much no feeling in the leg, and we call them the dreaded peas, for example. So this is what they actually reported that he needed. And given the fact that he had pretty severe fractures to the right lower leg, it's not, it, it makes complete sense as to why he needed a fasciotomy. Essentially this kind of summarizes what a fasciotomy is. You will cut down a linear incision to try to release that covering over the, the, the muscle groups. So we reviewed the injuries that Tiger Woods has sustained in this pretty serious crash, but now you may be asking, can he go back to playing? Well, unfortunately, Tiger Woods is, is not a, a newbie when it comes to injuries. And if you take a look at this infographic here, you can just see how many surgeries this poor guy needed to go through. And it just seems like he's got these constant setbacks. Now, unfortunately, this one is gonna add just that much more. So to really hone in on whether or not these injuries would impact Tiger Woods, let's look at his swing and how he uses his right leg. So most of his injuries were right leg dominant. And as you can see, his right leg is his back leg when he golf swings. And you'll see here, he will essentially be twisting on this leg. Now, to be honest, he doesn't actually have to put too much force and torque on that leg. So think about basketball players, soccer players, quick pivoting motions, and also having to flex this foot all the way up. When someone has a fractured ankle, it tends to get really stiff in the joint, and typically we're gonna expect people to have difficulty bringing their, their foot upwards. In his swing, he doesn't appear to have to deal with that flexion or extension of that foot too, too much. So I don't think that's gonna be the limiting factor. The unfortunate part though, is that he's got this open fracture and comminuted fracture in this area. So we're gonna to need to make sure it heals up and it's nice and strong before he can kind of twist on that and use this leg as a stability leg. But whether or not Tiger Woods can return will depend on how he heals from his, his multiple broken ankle fractures as well as his comminuted tibia fibula fracture. To be honest, this could very well be a career ending injury. And it really depends on how his rehabilitation and what he looks like afterwards. So his sport may have something that goes in his favor. Whether or not he can come back from this, only time will tell, and hopefully when I get some more information, we can do an update video. I think it is possible that he can come back from this, but I also think that there is a good chance that this may be a career-ending injury for Tiger Woods. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on latest videos. For now, that's all.